so uh, we just reached a quorum, and so uh, we have a uh, we're ready to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 10:36 here uh, on Caddo Nation Zoom membership meeting, and the council's present here at the Caddo Nation Tribal Headquarters. So uh, with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, we're gonna pray before we get started. And so uh, I had a, a, a great uncle who told me one time, when someone asks you to sit here, you pray. You know what you want for your people. Don't put it on someone else. And that time has come today for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do what I can to, to uh, offer a word of prayer and uh, uh, just bear with me for a moment. Hoya Ohio, Kakea Hea Bosa, Ohio, Conadis Ka, Conadis Jo, Conahako, Conahati, Ohio, Ditti Dawina, Monti Dakatonkayo, Han, Ohio, Hasime, Ohio, Kaotia, Akatonkayo. These different, different directions, Almighty God. Conakai, the great doctor that you are, I want you to look down upon us today through your son, Jesus Christ, that we can come together and understand your will so that we can move forward as a people, a human, a human being, uh, the humans that you created as cattle people, are people that uh, are suffering today, those are, that are incarcerated, those that are in mourning, those that are in the hospital. We ask that you be with them, you bless them, their minds, their spirits, their hearts, uh, their internal souls that uh, they have, almighty God. You lift their spirits up, uh, let them know that we're thinking about them today, Take care of our tribe, our people, our loved ones, those that are against us, those that are even against us that are even our own people. You bless their minds and their spirits and their hearts so they don't have to be like that. And at the same time, you forgive me for my uh, wrongdoings and things that uh, I'm not worthy of uh, uh, talking to you about at times, almighty God. And you uh, look down upon me and uh, I ask you to forgive me for my own sins in that kind of way. I ask that you forgive me if I've said anything wrong, I've done anything wrong, or I've offended anyone that is listening or that is here in person or that I may see on the street, almighty God, throughout my life. I ask you to look down upon each one of the elected leaders here, their minds, their spirits, their hearts, their decisions that they make, the things that they go through in their daily lives, almighty God, you must be with them and take care of them. Those programs and employees, the people that we have, you must bless them and their lives and their spirits and their hearts and their children, grandchildren, those uh, uh, ones that are without Almighty God trying to make it today in this life. During this pandemic, you bless them and you look down upon them. Take care of those uh, losses that we've had. Help us to get through this pandemic, Almighty God. It's not the first time our people has faced this crisis when a pandemic has wiped out our people years and years, hundreds of years ago. I ask that you look down upon us and watch over us. Bless our dance ground. Those that carry our songs, bless our, bless our Native American church followers and our believers and all our churches, all the different denominations, because there's only one God. We believe in you, and we ask that you look down upon us. For your son, Jesus Christ, you can take care of this meeting today. You can be with us throughout all our everyday walks of life. And uh, those that don't believe, almighty God, somewhere, somehow, some way, uh, you can put it in their heart to find your will. And uh, you take care of all these different denominations that we have. However they come to you, however they are when they come to you, pity their prayers, help them throughout their life. And at the same time, when you help them, pity myself and uh, help me to where I can help each other, help our people and look down upon those that are helping us today in this room, making this uh, virtual meeting happen, happen for our people. With all this said, if I left anything out, I ask you to forgive me. And those unspoken words and those unspoken things in my mind and my spirit and my heart, you know my mind, you know my heart. I ask you to take care of it for your son, Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I ask you to look down upon us. I'm right here. Our people's warrior. I ask you to take care of it like that, almighty God. For your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay. So are we ready? Okay. All right. So uh, 
we had the invocation. I don't know if uh, everyone's still online. Thank you for being here today. And so um, we'll go ahead and uh, we have the minutes. I think we have the approval of the minutes. They were shared online as well. We'll start with January 29th. And uh, if there any, is any uh, comments or uh, additions or edits, uh, we'll give everyone a moment. So just so that everyone, I think I'm having a problem on this mic. Can you hear me? Did you hear me earlier? Okay. Did you hear the prayer? Okay. Just so that everyone knows online, we are social dis distancing. If you can see us, uh, we do have our mask here. And so we are social distancing ourselves. You have to remember also that we have uh, uh, some people on the board uh, that work for or retired from Indian Health Service. And so it's kind of one of those things that we're being real cautious of. Uh, so that's why you see us uh, <laughs> sitting in different places. Is there any comments or, or where are we at with the... Uh... Oh, we... I think we had one comment. Uh, the minutes are much better, and they said hoey. I think we're good, right? And so we'll go ahead and uh, ask for ask for a motion to approve the minutes, and uh, if someone would like to do that, and then we can get someone to second that, and we'll have a vote. Quinlan. So Becky Quinlan made a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, do I hear a second? Uh, John Moss second uh, the minutes. And so uh, do we have a vote? Yeah. You need to put I, yes, or uh, Poey in the check checkbox. So we're counting. How many? Sixteen four and two extensions so far. So there's two that hadn't voted yet. Then. We'll give them just a second. Are they, you got them. So how many do we have now? So we have 19 yes and two abstain. Is that correct? And any objections? What's that? Okay. Okay, so it has passed and appreciate everybody online participating.
So we'll move on to the uh, next uh, minutes that we need to look at. And the date is April 30th. And you have a copy of those. If there's any comment, uh, discussion, please let us know in the chat box. Is there any comments at the moment? I don't believe we have any comments at the moment. So we'll go ahead and take a vote on the minutes as is. If you can, uh, Again, uh, help us on your end and respond in your chat box, yes, abstain, or hoey, or ana, if you can spell it. That means go ahead. So John Moss made a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, do we have a second? Christy, Christy Chandler uh, second uh, the motion, and so it is up for a vote. Also, if you know, um, have any relatives that are in Road Caddo or know other Caddo's that, uh, while we're uh, tallying up the, the votes here, that is not tech savvy. Uh, I remember uh, when we used to have put, put change in a, in a phone, in a phone booth, whether it's a dime, a nickel, or a quarter. So, uh, you know, those that uh, aren't tech, tech savvy, if they want to copy, of the report that is online, they can come to the tribal complex. It's pretty extensive and uh, we'll provide them a hard copy of the report as well. And no extensions are known. 20 yeses, two extensions and no no. Oh. Do we have any no's? We do have 20 yeses and two abstain. Okay, so the motion has carried and the minutes have been approved and we appreciate everyone online making that happen. Again, I'm just going to, for those that hadn't, wasn't online, I'm just going to make this real short. And, uh, you know, again, I wanted to want to thank everyone for being online uh, today. And it's pretty historic. It's an historic moment for us regarding our nation and our enrollment. We have reached 7,000 members. Uh, I believe we enrolled, was it 37 or 39? 39 uh, individuals uh, uh, during our last council meeting. And uh, that was the other day, and it put us at 7,000 even. Now, that is a unique number. 
uh, because uh, it's just uh, it's a it's a big number, seven generations, seven thousand members, seven constellations, seven days of the week, seven wonders of the world, seven walnuts that they put on our drum and our in our uh, Native American church meeting that we use seven days of the week, and uh, it's it's a real unique number. So we're really uh, glad to see our nation continue to grow. Uh, next to the Comanche Nation and the Kiowa, uh, now uh, the Caddo Nation is the largest tribe uh, in the area. And so uh, we're really glad to see that. Now, with that said, during the French and the Spanish, when we were encountering, encountering with the French or trading with the French and the Spanish encountered us, scholars and researchers have said that at one time there was a half a million of us that spoke 28 different dialects that encompassed four different states uh, known as Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas, and Oklahoma today. A pandemic during that time took our people out. Uh, our people couldn't withstand uh, those diseases, and history has shown that those diseases during that time, uh, during the 1600s, uh, that's what took our people out. Again, we're faced with the virus today. Uh, we want everyone to, to, to continue to uh, stay safe. Uh, we have people in the hospital. Uh, we have employees that are sick and uh, uh, that have it as well. And we have elected leaders also just got, there's several of them on here that just finished uh, with uh, having this, uh, this virus. Uh, and so we're glad that we can get together in another form uh, related to today. And again, we're following CDC guidelines, uh, congressional notes, as well as state uh, notes and uh, following IHS in their lead. And we're being proactive. Now, uh, other tribes have other forms of how they want to do things, but I take it, uh, I think we've done, we've done real well with what we needed to do to protect our tribe, but still keep the doors open without completely shutting and providing services for our people. So with that said, I talked about the current state of the tribal government. The number one thing is our audits are clean, and which is great. That didn't happen every day. Uh, and so uh, we have over 58 different programs of dollars. Those are federal and state grants, all competitive. Nothing is given to the tribe. There is, uh, that's a misnomer that, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, government or agencies just gives money to tribes. No, you have to apply for it. You have to have clean audits. You have to know how to write uh, for those grants, and you have to understand the regulations and the state and the federal rules and how that works. So with that said, our employment has grown and it created jobs with over 2000% increase of jobs uh, here within the tribe and dollars. It allowed us to employ now over 70 people. That includes contractors with one third of those employees being CADA. And so uh, that's, that's remarkable in itself. And of course they all have families and it allows them to sustain themselves that is real practical preservation. And we have uh, quadrupled uh, our land base and we have resolved most all the debt within the Caddo Nation and continue to clean up uh, what is outstanding, which is minimal. And so uh, these existing dollars and existing grants, you can't go out and you just, you know, and pay existing debt. You have to know how to uh, visit with those individuals to resolve some of that stuff. So that brings us to uh, constitutional reform, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I just wanted to address the membership and uh, talk about the current state of the tribal government. That is where your government is today, and uh, we're moving towards self-governance. In order to do that, we also have to talk about constitutional reform, and we start, have to start having public membership meetings. Those membership meetings are going to go live this quarter and uh, also in person as long as we can get through this pandemic and keep everyone safe. Native nation building is a governance challenge. I want everyone to understand that. It is about Native nations enhancing their own cap capabilities and capacity to be self-sufficient with an effective self-rule. It does not start out that way. This form of government that we have today is foreign to the Caddo people. We have uh, historically and traditionally had our own form of government. When we adopted the constitution of the tribe, it, it was totally against our uh, culture. So 
there's prior steps that was taken to correct uh, a lot of those things throughout the years. But I want everyone to know that the necessary, it's necessary uh, that we have certain conditions for uh, rebuilding our nation to establish first uh, the right to self-determination. Obtaining substantial decision-making control over the nation's land, resources, affairs for the future. This is the first step. The one that leads to government challenge, of course, is the, it's a massive task in itself to uh, take on uh, in acquiring uh, what's been so at a disarray for all these years. So if you understand uh, the course that we're, we, we're, we are taking, it's a massive task in itself. Here in the United States, despite the successes of all American nations, all American Indian tribes, they had to deal with what we, we have dealt with over the last three decades by reclaiming control over some of our own affairs, our own resources, our own land, our own self-determination. And of course, we have the struggle of making that happen. The struggle for self-determination goes on. The fight continues with actions contrary to our needs with Congress, state, and of course, our native rights being violated. We are our own worst enemy at times. Sometimes we can't seem to get out of our own way. People believe they have uh, a magic wand, and quite frankly, uh, sometimes that all gets us in trouble. And but we all have to have respect uh, for our differences and how we see our government being ran. So this tribal government uh, will be hosting public meetings, uh, membership meetings regarding constitutional reform to bring the tribe and move the tribe uh, forward for the next 200 years. In order to get to where we're at today with that, we have we had to. Uh, go back to looking to look at our current state of affairs related to tri our tribal government, which that's what I talked about earlier. And then to know where you're at, to know where you're going, you have to look at history. Uh, again, we talked about the pandemic taking our people out. We're faced with the pandemic today. Uh, we have to know where we've been. We have to know where we're at in order so we don't have to go back and repeat history. History always has a, a way of repeating itself. So we want to move forward. So we are there now uh, with our clean audits. We want to go towards self-governance and we want to continue to move our tribe forward and uh, with constitutional reform. With that said, those members that are online, uh, those members that are out there at large, uh, please discuss among yourselves. Uh, please send us a note. You can email me personally, the counseling and the council members that you would like to participate. I know that we will put a small co committee together. It's just a, a, a small little form that will help us with constitutional reform. Now, I have reached out to Harvard Law, and uh, Harvard uh, there uh, has individuals that have helped tribes with constitutional reform, and they're willing to help us pro bono. Now, uh, that is a great thing because they've helped nations throughout the United States go from a one-tier government to a three-tier government. And as long as we're a one-tier government, uh, it's doomed for failure uh, because you can't, you can't run a tribe with a one-tier government. It just doesn't work in today's day and age. I have reached out uh, to other tribes and uh, uh, we uh, were uh, contacted uh, by the Speaker of the House uh, with the Chickasaw Nation. Uh, they were so excited where the Caddo Nation is headed, and uh, they called us. Uh, we didn't call them. Uh, they asked us if we needed any help, and I mentioned that we needed help with constitutional change, constitutional reform. Uh, we needed. We don't need to re or, you know, reinvent the wheel. They've been there. Uh, they know how to get to where uh, they're going. Uh, they wouldn't be there today without that. They were at one time a one-tier government, so uh, they have. A lot of resources. Uh, they have told me that they're willing to provide uh, counsel, their legal counsel, uh, and a host of others to help us at no cost to the tribe. Uh, so we we plan on going uh, down to Ada and uh, listening to what they have to say, and take a few council members and some of our legal people to hear about uh, what we need to do 
as far as uh, not reinventing the wheel. And with all that said, uh, with working with Harvard related to constitutional reform, having public meetings and having other tribes helps, help us, it is uh, our goal as a, as a, as a government to uh, have constitutional reform and change on the next ballot. That's, that, has to, that has to happen. And uh, they're in the next election. And so uh, we have uh, some time and uh, uh, to get there, but at the same time, we wanna make sure our members are, are a part of that and uh, that process. So that, 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 that's why we're gonna have these meetings is to allow you to participate in uh, that constitutional change and reform. So be watching the website, uh, let us know if you'd like to participate at, at, at another level. I think there's some online that's already uh, said that they're willing to do that. And so uh, I wanna thank uh, those that are online to, to make that happen. I wanna save the qu uh, uh, questions uh, you have at the end. I'll, I'll be done shortly because we wanna open this up for just a conversation uh, related to uh, what you would like to talk about as members of the tribe. Uh, we just kinda wanna set some, uh, um, you know, let you know where we're at as far as uh, the tribe. Now that's pretty much the new business, but also it's kind of like, a, 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 you know, a continuous thing as far as like, uh, a, you know, old business as well. But we did put on the agenda, which you have a copy, old business. And there's been a lot of discussion about WCD lands jointly owned by the Wichita, Caddo and Delaware. I wanna let everyone know on this call and uh, we will do everything we can legally legally, ethically, and morally right to work with the other two nations. That includes the Wichita and affiliated tribes. That includes the Delaware Nation. We're all about progress. We all would like to see each tribe succeed. We sit on uh, the WCD board. Uh, I, I am now the vice president of the WCD board as well. Uh, that's what happens when you don't show up in, at, to a meeting, they just vote you in. So that's how that happened. We are, we are all for moving the tribes forward. And I know that they feel the same way about the Caddo Nation. However, there are those that probably are listening and those that are out there that may not feel that way. Well, we wanna you know, be positive and be proactive. So uh, we're more than happy to listen to the other two sovereign nations as they move toward economic development, where it is our hope that they listen to us and that we can always come to the table and agree to disagree and move on or agree to agree. So with that said, I, I, we, there's been a lot of conversation about our lands there and ownership and, and uh, quite frankly, some of it's been pretty ugly. And so today, I know that there's been a decision made, not from the Caddo Nation, not from the Delaware Nation, but from the Department of Interior, Bureau of Indian Affairs, that all lands held in trust, jointly owned when it comes to WCD, land is jointly owned by the Wichita and affiliated tribes, the Caddo Nation, and the Delaware Nation. The Caddo Nation owns the biggest share based on population which is 56.9% of all land holdings of WCD lands, surface and what's in the ground. With that said, it, it, it goes, it's, it's related to population base and court case law with the, with the next biggest share of interest owned by the Wichita and affiliated tribes. And the next after that is the Delaware. Now in meeting with the other two sovereigns, we all need to work together. We all have to come together. Sometimes it's not easy coming together, but it's my hope that the Wichita and affiliated tribes and their endeavors and the Delaware's endeavors and ours can all work in some capacity together so that we can uh, move our tribes forward that's beneficial to each of the sovereign nations. Make no mistake about it, the Caddo Nation will never ever let anyone or any individual or any sovereign nation or Congress or anyone move or a state or a governor push the Caddo nation around. With that said, we're gonna do what we can to protect the interests of the tribe related to the law, to, lay, to related to what values we have that's legally and ethically right 
and we're going to work with every entity we can, including state and federal officers, regulators, including the other two sovereigns related to this land. And so with respect to those two nations, I want to let them know we're going to do everything we can to resolve any issues uh, and, and move forward uh, the best way we can for the benefit of the Caddo Nation as well. So I will leave that at that. Uh, the, we are uh, moving toward a court system here within the Caddo Nation. Uh, the Court of Indian Offenses, uh, CFR, has jurisdiction to hear any disputes related to any programs, directors, employees, elected officials, including myself. If you don't feel like you have, uh, uh, you, you don't feel like you're getting the services you need, if you feel like, hey, you know, uh, I don't agree with the chairman, and, uh, you know, in the past you would petition uh, the tribe for something, or maybe you had a petition against a chairman and it came to the tribe and it just basically got tossed in the trash. Well, today you can have your recourse and your time in court by going to CFR court, and uh, because they have jurisdiction now. Uh, the tribal government, um, again, we mentioned this before, we've, get, we've granted uh, the Court of Indian Offenses jurisdiction uh, related to any disputes as a whole within the government or any of its programs or employees to keep everyone, including myself, uh, at, at a balanced out. It means that it's all fair. Uh, and so that's the best thing that we can do until we ourselves have our own court system. And when we passed that law, we let the United States Department of Interior Bureau of Indian Affairs know until we come up with our own court system, at any time we can pull that, pull that back inside internally for the tribe. And I want everyone to know right now that we have an in-house counsel. Uh, he is a one, one day a week, he's a federal prosecutor. Uh, and uh, he's a really sharp individual. He's our policy analyst, and our legal team, as well with Connors and Winters, are working toward going after the mechanisms and the dollars uh, to uh, provide our own court system, uh, to hear our own uh, internal disputes, uh, and to uh, uh, also, as we grow, uh, we have to have an attorney general so that when we have law, we pass law, uh, we codify the law underneath uh, our attorney general's office, and so that when other uh, elected leaders and others come into office, you just can't go in there and break that. You have to; it has to have merit. Uh, it has to have a substance. And so you get away from, well, I just don't like that person because they did something, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to just rescind it or tear it to shreds. So we are onboarding the Caddo Nation. With a court system, an attorney general uh, office will eventually happen. Hopefully, a new building uh, related to a government, real nice uh, government facility uh, will happen. Uh, we're looking at the 10 acres next to us. Uh, environmentally, what's there? Culturally, what's there? Uh, we're, we're just in those conversations at the moment. And also, uh, in those conversations with the DOI and BIA and uh, having our own court system and what we need to do. And so uh, they're really excited about that. We are the only nation uh, within the seven tribes area that's allowed uh, the court of Indian offenses to hear disputes. And so their hats are off to us. Uh, and uh, they're also willing to help us provide the, the technical support and the resources uh, so that we can acquire what we need to acquire to have our own court system and have our own uh, systems in place here. And we have to have it. And the reason we have to have it is when you get into economic development, uh, one, they're going to want to make sure that your audits are clean. Uh, two, they're going to want to make sure that they have recourse in court of law if there's any disputes. And so we covered those bases. As we move towards uh, acquiring grants and dollars and opportunity for our tribes and increase uh, the numbers of, em of employees, the right employees, we're able to go after more funding. By going after more funding, uh, and through other means like the infrastructure bill, it'll allow us to sustain the tribe while we grow the tribe. And as we move toward economic development, those individuals and those teams and those resources will allow us to do that. Again, we, we can't do anything without the resources with, within people or the dollars uh, to uh, hire the right people to make that happen. So uh, that's where we're at with uh, moving the tribe forward. 
uh, with our, within our court uh, um, area. And then also I uh, wanna bring out a little bit about the internal uh, and external communication to tribal members. Uh, right now we uh, are talking with uh, not only with a newspaper printing place, but also a printing press and looking at acquiring a, a, uh, a mechanism, a way that we can get, uh, our, uh, get the resources and information out to our members, whether it's uh, you know, through uh, social media or hard copies in the mail, events that are happening, things that you want to know about, uh, you know, membership meetings, events, uh, everything that you would see other tribes doing at, across the country, and you're wondering, why isn't our tribe doing that? Why aren't we doing that? We want to do those things, and we want to make sure that it's done right. So we're looking at our social media, uh, how we, how, you know, this is a, an example of it right here and having this meeting today through uh, uh, this process. It's all new to us. And of course, uh, you know, there's going to be some learning curves, uh, just like there's uh, learning every day as we continue to uh, make mistakes. Uh, nothing's perfect. Uh, and we will learn from them. And so uh, I, I believe that as long as we continue to learn from our mistakes, grow on our strengths and move forward and have the right people helping us move forward, I, I believe this nation uh, will be once again in a, in, a, in a situation where it's very positive. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, feedback from a lot of our members, other tribes, and are really excited where we're headed. So we are working on an internal and external communications plan uh, with uh, other tribal members that are providing that help. Uh, we're moving toward uh, putting a team together. Uh, the council, uh, we've talked about it, and uh, you know, I'm out there uh, doing what I can to make sure that as we discuss those things, I can bring back those resources to the tribe and uh, make some of those things happen. So with all that said, we wanna turn the meeting over to have an open conversation uh, related to our membership and what you heard. Uh, if there's any, uh, you know, comments, suggestions, uh, if there's anything that you would like to say, uh, we're, we're here to listen to what you have to say. Uh, now, I want everyone also to know that uh, we want to have substance and merit to this meeting. Uh, we don't want to have uh, a situation where uh, one individual or someone is just continuing on uh, with uh, uh, just uh, just talking to be talking. Uh, you know, we, we, we've seen that over and over during our membership meetings, uh, and we don't want to muzzle anyone from not communicating uh, their interests, but with respect, with respect for everyone's time listening today, let's have respect for each other, and let's give other people a chance to uh, have a, uh, a comment or a suggestion so uh, we're going to move on and uh, just open it up for a conversation. If anyone has any comments related to the tribe. Yes. Okay. Um, so the first question we have, uh, there's a question for you, Bobby. Um, when will the nation be meeting with the Chickasaw Nation? Is there a date set up for that yet? Or do you still need to make contact with that office and follow up? So there was a question when when we would be meeting with the Chickasaw Nation, hopefully soon. I did uh, get a phone call from the Speaker of the House when she was in Washington, D.C., and uh, they've been quite busy. Uh, they have a little surge in that area as well. Uh, but I was told as soon as she gets back from D.C. and as soon as they pull their team together, they would uh, set some dates for us and uh, propose some dates and times to allow us to come down. Can you hear me? Am I on? Okay. Okay. There's also, um, a comment about getting in touch with Chief Chuck Hoskins Jr. I think you've already met with him. You may want to give an update on that uh, regarding constitutional reform. I know you met with him over a number of things. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there was a question about meeting with uh, Chief, Chief Ch uh, Chuck Hoskins Jr., uh, the Cherokee uh, Chief of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, I did meet with him and his office, and uh, uh, it, was, it was pretty interesting when I met with him. Uh, you know, they have thousands and thousands of members, and, and he said, you know, our members are always looking for the next best thing. And uh, 
Uh, we talked about constitutional reform. We talked about grants. We talked about ARPA. Uh, and we talked about a lot of different things. But the one thing that stood out to me the most is that uh, he's willing to help in any capacity he can and provide information to us related to meetings uh, that we may attend. I think uh, our vice chairman, Kelly, has attended some of them, uh, which is the Indian Boarding School Initiative. And so, uh, and then, of course, meeting Deb Holland here when Deb Holland came to Anadarko, Oklahoma. And so uh, Chuck Hoskins Jr. and his team uh, and their Tribal em and Employment Rights Office, uh, their TARO and their Career Services are, are providing us information so that uh, we can follow suit as far as like maybe having a, a Tribal Employment Rights Office and uh, not reinventing the wheel. Uh, they're trying to do what they can to get us information and just send us some, some, some helpful tools. Okay, let me get back. Okay, so um, am I on? Yeah. Okay, so it's not green, so, oh, there it is. The light's okay. not on, but we're on, right? Okay, okay, that's good to know. So um, there was a comment from Christy Chandler. She's wanting to acknowledge um, the leadership of the election, election board, you know, Sharla, and I'd like to acknowledge all of the election board for doing a great job and um, it's, you know, and I guess, for Charlotte completing two back-to-back -back elections. So she's wanting to, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, she's wanting to acknowledge Charlotte, but I say we acknowledge the whole election board. You all did a good job. Do you have anything to right. add? <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, uh, my apologies. Uh, yes, you know, we do want to acknowledge the election board to get in this where we're at today. And uh, now that the election is over, the tribal government, you know, is faced with, uh, uh, something that's very positive as well, you know, is uh, reform with related to elections and making sure that, uh, you know, we put some solid things in place for the next 200 years related to uh, how we're going to run these elections at a very, very high level. And so across the nation, uh, where there's, uh, I believe, 579 tribes, uh, 578, depending on who you listen to, uh, all federally recognized, and they and we're, we're taking the best approach related to uh, election processes uh, that are out there across the nation, and comparing that and cross referencing referencing that with what we do here, and uh, we're going to have uh, that reform as well. Hopefully, the next election that'll all be done, and uh, we'll move forward with uh, uh, not only just having that in place, but also budget and dollars to go with it, and. Uh, and uh, you know, making it making it real, real easy uh, to uh, to vote and be a part of the election. I'll give you an example. The Constitution of the Caddo Nation says that if you're 18 years of age, you're able to vote. However, that hadn't been uh, the case uh, in in the past. Depending on who's in power and depending on, uh, unfortunately, who you're related to, uh, some of those things might not have worked. Uh, the way that uh, people may have perceived it to work. The only thing that's going to correct that is corrective measures and looking at other nations and what they do and how they do uh, the things that they do to make those things a success. So uh, we're looking at that as well. And I want to thank Sharla. Uh, uh, she uh, has done a lot of things uh, uh, for it to make that happen in her world, as well as every election uh, board member, I want to thank each one of you for uh, your time and effort and uh, making that happen. So uh, appreciate it again. Okay, we have a question about seating the hearing board. Um, I did make a note in the chat box that we were waiting for the um, past election to go through. We wanted to see if anybody would run for the positions but um, they didn't. So now we do have a list of people who have um, asked to be on that board. Do you want to comment on the hearing board situation? Yeah, just so that everyone knows that, uh, you know, if you're interested in being on the hearing board, we do have a, a, a list now. Now that the election is over with, uh, we're going to be mo moving toward that. But, but in lieu of not having a hearing board, uh, 
uh, or other boards. Uh, the CFR court has jurisdiction to hear disputes. And so in other words, the only reason you would have a hearing board if there was a dispute with uh, an elected leader, including myself, and there was a petition and you wanted to say, you know, I'm gonna get a petition to remove the chairman. That's what the hearing board is, is about. They're not in to, to interfere in the day-to-day -day, day -day operations. Uh, they're here to hear disputes. In lieu of the fact that we haven't had a hearing board, uh, in the law itself that we passed to hand over CFR jurisdiction to the court, uh, if someone wanted to get a petition against any member on this council or petition the tribe for any grievance related to that rule, uh, you can go to CFR court and have your day in court. And of course, we will meet you there uh, and, and you will have your grievance heard there. Uh, we had to do that because uh, uh, we just didn't have the people. I believe we only had one that was elected. And uh, there was no ordinance. And there was, and, and the other thing is, there's no ordinance related to uh, the the hearing board. And so yeah, you there's have There's like to a have, blurb in the constitution and that's enough. It actually needs an ordinance. Right. And it, it's. And that's where constitutional reform comes in. You know, you have to have an ordinance related to a hearing board or, or policies. And when you have an empty building and you can't find something, you can't have someone walk off the street and say, oh, well, here, here it is. Well, you don't have any minutes related to that or a resolution related to that, or if it was never done. Uh, those, those are the things that we've been faced with. It's all legalese. It's all, uh, you know, stuff that we can prove and stuff that we can have. So even though the Constitution says that you're to have a hearing board, there's never been a hearing board ordinance. And if there was a hearing board ordinance today, it doesn't exist because, quite frankly, it either walked off or it was destroyed. Um, you know, so uh, it was we, we were faced with the task of let's do the next best thing. Let's protect the tribe, protect all interests of the tribe, give everyone a fair shot. If you have any grievance against any elected leader, you can take us to task and take it to CFR court. We'll meet you there. And the reason for that, it keeps me honest. It keeps the council honest. And that's what we want. Uh, we want, uh, you know, our integrity and in who we are uh, and who you are to have a fair shake and we can all come to the table. So we are getting a list together now, now that the election's over with. Yeah, we have a list that was given to us at a membership meeting. And I know you vetted some of that list and there were some people who weren't qualified. They didn't meet the right. age requirement. I think maybe one person, um, I believe, is it 35 to be on the hearing board? Yeah, yeah. there's an age limit, you know, to sit on the hearing board. Some yeah, you have to be qualify, at least 35, yeah. But at the same time, looking but we do at, have a list. So, so looking at the list, it's preemptive of us to put anyone on the board at the moment because there's no rules to that. There's no guidance related to that. And so in talking to our legal counsel and looking at an ordinance to, so that they can have some rules to go by, we can do that simultaneously. Like if we have these individuals that are interested, uh, then we can say, okay, uh, we can put some thresholds on, on getting something rolled up, but not uh, in a way that uh, we're gonna do it in a day or two, because it's taken time. For all these years, it's just never happened. And I think that's, that's, that's why uh, in the past, uh, you've had petitions come in to the tribe against elected leaders and they never went anywhere. Uh, and so uh, we mm -hmm. want to do away with that kind of uh, uh, bureaucracy, I guess, within our nation. So we're moving ahead with it. Yeah, and we are reviewing um, various ordinances that the tribe has now. They, they're very outdated. We just um, edited or amended the um, housing board ordinance, and that was a pretty big one. So we're trying to go through the ordinances, um, you know, when, as we have time. Um, I think we're going to be looking at what the election board ordinance, kind of updating right. some things. And then we also need to, um, I, I believe there's a draft of a, hearing board ordinance that we just haven't looked at yet, right? Or is that still being worked on? Yeah, there's there's several different ordinances provided from different tribes of how they do things. So we're taking the best approach related to the successful tribes. Uh, I don't know if any of you on the phone rem or, or on the call remember the, the governor of the Choctaw Nation, uh, Pal, Governor Pal. He said, Bobby, all we do is take what other tribes are doing successful and we don't reinvent the wheel. 
And so that's the approach we're taking as well. And other tribes are willing to help us. What's interesting is they've all faced the same thing at one time or another that we faced in the past. The infighting, you know, the overthrowing each other, uh, the not listening to petitions. And, and so it's very interesting to hear their stories. So in the meantime, the positive thing is that uh, the Court of Indian Offenses uh, can hear any disputes related to anything uh, related to that world. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, and we have a couple of questions about um, asking if we can continue Zoom meetings for the people who are out of the area. And I think that's a that's a yes. We that's that's been our goal the whole time is to involve as many people as we can. Uh, yes, you know, I think that we have the other council members here and, you know, all of them agree, all the elected leaders that you see here, uh, we all agree to continue these meetings live. Hopefully we'll be better at it. I'd like to see them televised, you know, in a better way. We'd like to see commercials as well across the state as we have constitutional reform uh, not only having uh, one or two members on the council at large uh, in, in looking at tabletop research and other tribes, uh, we should have, uh, it's something that we can discuss as a whole, we should have uh, council members at large at least four. That would put our council at 12. Uh, most have 14 to 23 council members, it, it does happen. And it, and it will continue to happen as we grow. As we grow, we need to allow more people to participate in uh, those out-of-state caddos. I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of programs and services that we provide that does not allow us to help people that live out of state. And until we have economic growth and, and be able to help them in other capacities, uh, you know, if you're applying for a HUD, a HUD if you're applying for Dollars Air or or if you're applying for social services or certain things, th those grant sources only allow us to help certain areas uh, and, you know, jurisdictionally. And so a lot of our out-of-state members go without uh, the help that they need. And uh, we need to fix that. And the way we're gonna fix that is through economic development. The other thing is arguing the case uh, with the state or congressional leaders or elected leaders, why we need to, uh, you know, look at, uh, including those areas and broaden those areas for services. So if we had, if in a Caddo traditional way, we do things in fours. Where the sun comes up, where uh, it's warm, where the winter comes from and where the sun sets. Four, there's four directions in life. Well, if we had one uh, representing uh, the East Coast, the West Coast, the North, and the South at large, I think that would be great because then we have those four representatives representing uh, all areas uh, related to uh, the United States. And as we grow, we really need to look at that. And so, uh, uh, there, again, those are why we want to have those public meetings related to constitutional reform. Uh, so, I don't think we need to have uh, one or two. I think it needs to be four. Again, that's a conversation related to uh, these public meetings and what we come up with because I'm not the end on be all I don't own the tribe you do and uh, all of us have something to share that's just my own personal uh, thought as the uh, chairman at the moment okay so I have a question and a comment they're kind of related so I'll just present both of them at the same time um Corey says has our council gone through our tribe to see who's educated in law and that's a yes um, I'll let you expand on that. Um, John Moss is asking for you to contact his brother. He's a CFR court judge, Stephen John Moss. No one has followed up with him, and he's a Caddo member. So if you want to take what was the first one, um, have we have we looked at the tribe, like contacted um, like tribal members who are you know legal experts or lawyers or. Yes, we have contacted tribal leaders that are experts in the field in the field of federal law uh, that's argued ninth and 10th circuit court cases and we have uh, tribal members that are married to individuals that handled some of the most uh, 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 daunting cases in the United States. I'll give you I'll give you an example. Uh, Kilpatrick and Townsend, the gentleman that uh, argued the Cobell case is married to an inroad Caddo. He was the first ambassador to the United Nations and appointed, uh, actually he was uh, appointed 
he was appointed by the Obama, President Obama during the, his administration, and he was uh, went through his Senate confirmation uh, hearings uh, uh, during a time when uh, uh, there was a first Native American ever to be a, uh, an ambassador to the United Nations on indigenous rights. And so one of the things that we're also looking at is the UN Declaration of Indigenous Rights related to uh, our rights as uh, a people and how these uh, projects at large, when they're even removing our uh, ancestors from our homelands for a, a, you know profit related to a lake, a road, a construction, anything like that. So we need a team of lawyers. We need a, uh, we do have, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. We have people that went to Harvard uh, that are helping us that are inroad members of the Caddo Nation. Uh, we have people all over the country that we're pulling from right now that are willing to help us. And uh, uh, that team of names that we have internally, uh, we've asked to start having meetings uh, with them legally uh, pro bono, they're not charging us anything, just to get together to talk about the legalese, whether it's state and what we face as a nation uh, with, uh, here in the state of Oklahoma with uh, uh, things that we may not agree with with the governor about related to compacts, tobacco compacts, gaming compacts, other issues there, as well as uh, things that we need to do to grow the tribe. So those meetings are going to happen, Jennifer, that you had mentioned. And I think the last, not this last meeting, and the council knows we had a when we had a surge in the pandemic that and it kind of went on the wayside. Um, but we're looking to uh, uh, get everyone back on board. They're still on board. It's just that some of those individuals too that are lawyers that are willing to help us, they even got COVID. And I talked to one the other day, and his wife got it, and his daughter got it. So uh, you know, we just still have we still have the pandemic. Uh, but they're all on board to help us, and there's a little group that's formed to come together. Okay, um, here is a comment of how are we, um, how is enrollment being confirmed for the participants that are online? Like, how do we know that um, someone else that's not a tribal member is logged on and listening to our meetings? I think that's the reason we went off face. We took, we're doing Zoom now where they, people have to log in. Um, speaking for myself, I, I'm, I keep a list here and I mean, I can tell you, I know most of these people, so, um, but if we do have a question, we, I do flag them and, um, you know, which I haven't had a question on anyone to date, but if I did see someone on here, I would, um, you know, flag them and try to find out who they are from our enrollment office. That's yeah. 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 That, uh, so as long as, you know, you're, uh, you know, enter into our chat. We can see you. Uh, we can, uh, we know who you are. You know, we have a list. Uh, that was one of our concerns related to Facebook, I think. But, you know, when we do, when we have these kind of meetings, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're open. I mean, it's there. It's, it's, it's there from here on out through the history of the tribe. And just for those that don't know, Zoom is actually owned by the Chinese. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows that, but that is something that I found out about. And because in my private life, one of my best friends, uh, his wife is uh, is from China, and we were talking about social media, and she goes, you know, us Chinese, we own Zoom. And I'm like, you guys own everything. And it was just a funny conversation, but it was one of those things about cybersecurity, cyber attacks, uh, you know, false representation. We are under attack cyberly. Uh, uh, of course, we have our own in individual caddos uh, that are also trying to uh, pull some crazy things related to that as well. Uh, uh, in, in other words, they're not saying, I'll give you an example. When we have a program or a service, uh, we can see these different databases with state and other federal agencies, and we have people lying to us that are own members and people that uh, are trying to uh, basically go around our systems. And then at the same time, we have uh, uh, cyber attacks that are uh, underway related to our banks, uh, not us, uh, but our banking accounts. And so those banks call us and then we have to jump around and uh, re-sign stuff. I think Kelly has had to make a couple of trips to sign banking information because we had cyber attacks. And we're like, well, how does that happen? Well, it's in the air, you know, and so, one of the ways that we can fix this is moving toward economic development 
and having, uh, you know, an economic development authority, uh, which we just recently created. There will be subsidiaries under that authority where we have very, very well-educated people, business people, people that are bankers, people that are lawyers, people that are business people that are on that. People that just don't talk about it, people that have substance, it can prove that that's what they do or that's what they've done. You actually have to have a five-year minimal uh, experience in business or a degree in, in, in business in, in business to, to, to be in that world uh, the way we, that we set that law here. Now, the reason that's, that's important is because you mentioned, you know, how do you know who you are? Uh, right now, we're talking to a IT company uh, who's Caddo owned, uh, and uh, they're very excited about the possibilities of, uh, of creating an IT 8A company uh, with, with uh, our tribe. And so, uh, you know, that whole thing, you know, in the cloud world, we're learning more and more and more about that. Now, I can't go into all the details because we haven't even got to a confidentiality agreement. We just are visiting with some of our members at large with uh, anywhere from uh, semiconductors to IT to construction companies to other companies that now these members are starting to come forward. And uh, uh, we have people that own all sorts of different companies that are Caddo and they're willing to help us or they're willing to talk to us about making those things happen. So. Uh, uh, it's a real concern of ours. Uh, we're hoping that you are who you are. Uh, we have, I think, how many monitors do we have? Three over there? We have five monitors, uh, which you don't see in the background, and two individuals with five monitors and two headsets. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I hope I answered your question. If not, you know, we'll keep trying. Yeah, and um, you didn't answer about Stephen John Moss. Has any have have you followed up with him What's or that? Stephen John Moss um, about CFR court or you know? It says, uh, "Please engage my brother, CFR Judge Stephen John Moss." No one has followed up with him, and he's a Caddo member. Yes, I have followed up with him, and uh, you know, again, uh, you know, if he wants to participate as a making comments and just, uh, you know, we're able to pick each other brain, brains, uh, you know, he's willing to help. Uh, it's been a while since I've talked to him since uh, we've been trying to get the tribe up and going, but yes, he's willing to participate. Okay, here's a question about um, regarding AOA and transportation program. Can we provide transportation for our elders to travel between Regency Oaks elder housing to the Fritz Hendricks building to partake in the elder activities, including meals held at the building here. We can what? If can we transport people from the um, Regency Oaks to the um, Fritz Hendricks building, you know, for AOA activities? You know, it, I wouldn't see why not. But however, there is a there's a fine line related to jurisdiction uh, related to uh, AOA and what they do. I, I didn't know that at the time. Uh, the Apache tribe has a jurisdiction. Well, no, no. They mean people that live at the elder apartments. I, right, okay. exactly. Uh, and Anadarko. Right. I know. But see, okay, most okay. people that's Anadarko is served by, I believe, the uh, Wichita affiliated tribes related to their AOA program. Is the Can the tribe do it then if, if we can't do it in the AOA program? I don't know. Do we have the personnel like that? Could, well, that's another thing. Having yeah. personnel to drive there, you know, and pick them up. The right thing would be, why not? Right. Why yeah. Not? Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. But as yeah. far as like the legal part of it, I didn't know that the uh, the Delaware Nation has a jurisdiction. Yeah. The Wichita has a jurisdiction. The Caddo have a jurisdiction. Uh, the Apache tribe. All the tribes have jurisdictional areas where they don't cross over, uh, but yet they're they're feeding our members. They're going, and, and I'm like, well, why aren't we doing that? You know, but I don't see why we couldn't go to Anadarko and pick people up and bring them here. I mean, that's something that I can bring up to the AOA director and see why not. And then uh, maybe she can justify to me, why can't we do that? Yeah, because, so we don't deliver. AOA doesn't deliver there? Are they not? Is that what you said? Well, deliver food? They, they, you know what? They possibly could be delivering there. But legally, how they run those programs related to a that AOA world, that's the uh, the Wichita and the Apaches. They have that drew. We have this. We go towards Bangor, Lokiba, you know. Uh, it's just like the other day I talked to a lady who's uh, uh, 
uh, in road Cherokee. She said that she couldn't get any help because she didn't live in the district. The Chickasaws are taking care of her, you know, or the Creek are taking care of this other person. Well, these other tribes uh, are feeding our people like Anadarko area. That's the Wichita and, and the Apache tribe. That's their. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we so have no, it's a it's a great idea, and we do need to look into that. If if we can't do it through AOA, maybe we could discuss the tribe providing yeah, the I mean, transportation. We don't... Yeah, I guess. I mean, they serve food every day. I mean, I I could like in my mind, I can see a a little van or something picking them up and bringing them every day, and then bringing them back. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, we have the, the personnel. So, so the the we vice to, the vice chairman yeah. and the councils up here talking about, you know, uh, other tribes that are servicing our people and some of our people. We need to, to those check our resources. Those other tribal and, complexes to uh -huh. eat because that's in their area. But you know, it's just like anything else. Our members want to come know. here, you know, right? And we want to see okay. them. So we'll figure it out. I'll talk yeah. with AOA. It may be just you know a thing of uh, organizing or getting a van or getting another driver. Or, putting some resources behind it. So we'll look into it, definitely. Okay, here's a question about communication. So um, the five tribes, they conduct business with members through information portals that require a private sign-on, you know, where you can log in with your own sign-on to maybe do applications. I think we've talked about this before, where it's like a all self-serve um, portal for our members if they want to apply. They can get it all like a one-stop shop right there online. Right. Um, are we? Yeah, we, we've discussed that. And, uh, you know, with the job form and the IT world that we're moving in, you know, we have to get into the today's age. And, and even myself, I'm still learning, you know, personally, uh, you know, how to, uh, you know, about social media and how it works. So the best thing that we can do is uh, look internally. Uh, we, we are putting teams together internally now uh, to handle certain aspects within the government uh, because uh, we have to. Uh, and uh, one of it is IT, media, public relations, internal, external communications, uh, companies that may can help us, uh, software that may can help us. And so those conversations are being had. Those are, the, those are what the workers are doing now and having these team meetings. Eventually, all the team meetings, I'll give you an example, social service, AOA, uh, uh, child care director, anything related to health and wellness, those, that's a team. They're getting together to talk about their needs uh, as a whole, uh, dollars they may need, grants that they may need, funding they may need, uh, what they're hearing from our constituents in those areas related to districts. So that's a team. And then uh, we also have uh, an internal team related to grants and our contracts and our finances, uh, those, that team is, is in place as well. It's an internal team uh, that meet and talk about where we're at financially, if grants are being uh, appropriately taken care of and interim reports and, you know, in a timely manner, things are being paid on time. So there's a team internally uh, looking at all that. Uh, administratively, and then there's also a team related to environmental culture resources. Those teams are now being put in place, and uh, we've asked them to have uh, biweekly meetings. And in that, those those teams are going to provide uh, plans of actions and comments and suggestions back to the tribal government. And then the tribal government will have those records and where we need to move, like social media related to portals and in that world. So, uh, so that we can collectively start gaining uh, that knowledge from uh, what we're hearing and where we need to go. So we're excited about that. Okay, here's a question about cultural matters. Um, are we moving forward with any cultural or language preservation programs or facilities? Uh, so there was a question about language preservation? And cultural preservation. And, and cultural preservation. Well, yes, we are moving, uh, you know, ahead with culture preservation. Culture preservation, you can look at that in a lot of different ways. Practical culture preservation is providing jobs, opportunity for members. That is real preservation. That's pres preservation at its best. 
uh, because then you're able to sustain yourself and help your own family. The other thing is, you know, when you look at culture as a whole, uh, you probably ask a thousand different people what that actually means, and they'll give you a thousand different answers. We're seeing more culture events, more art events, more movies, uh, more museums, and more entities getting a hold of us, and our people at large is participating. I believe there's a gala that's going to happen real soon uh, related to Jerry Redcorn's work at the First American Museum. Uh, there's stuff going on in Texarkana. We had uh, Kay O'Neill, our uh, tribal council member, just came back from uh, Caddo Mounds, and they were there putting up uh, a, a grass thatched house, and they had a great time. Unfortunately, uh, they all got COVID, and you know, and she's doing better. She's here with us today. Uh, we're glad that she's well. Uh, I know there's some that's probably still going through the pandemic or having the virus, and she's got her mask. Uh, but we really appreciate, you know, Kay being down there and, and keeping the council informed. Those that wasn't able to participate, uh, in, you know, in that process, uh, you know, that's just the beginning. And as we continue uh, to move forward with our culture. And so uh, at large, uh, a lot of Caddo's are involved with culture preservation, uh, whether they're a single individual, an artist, or whether they're a sculptor, or whether they're uh, you know, uh, someone that just really wants to to uh, lend a helping hand in that world. Uh, the Caddo tribe's full of artists and culture people, and it shows. Uh, and so uh, we're doing what we can there. As far as the Tribal Historic Preservation Office and the Culture Preservation Department, uh, we, uh, of course, our uh, Tribal Historic Preservation Officer uh, is doing really well responding to those agencies and letting us know what uh you know what's going on out there as far as projects he also has a degree in in law and is a part-time or policy analyst and a federal prosecutor as well one day a week for the comanche nation and so uh we're really glad to have him on board so he is our tribal historic preservation officer and we don't have a nagpa person yet of course we don't have a nagpa grant we did apply for a nagpa grant i believe that's up to ninety thousand dollars we should be hearing about that grant and if we are successful in acquiring the grant, then that grant will allow us to hire someone to deal with the Native American Graves Protection Repatriation Act and collections. In the meantime, related to language, uh, like I said earlier, uh, we've lost so many during the pandemic. At the height of the pan at the pandemic, it was uh, we'll probably never. Uh, there's some of us will never get over the fact that we've lost uh, so many people that spoke our language during that time, basically the last of our speakers and the ones that were not, not impacted. Uh, we do have uh, one gentleman who's, uh, I believe he's 92, uh, that speaks uh, fluent Caddo, one is 103. We have others, uh, very, you know, we can count them on our hand today, but during the pandemic, we lost so many back to back that spoke our language or that new conversational Caddo and, uh, to uh, to uh, try to uh, you know follow a course to keep our language alive and to do the next best thing, the council uh, and the tribal government has allocated uh, uh, dollars uh, through the American Rescue Plan, and it's a and, and it's a it's a legal spend. Now, related to the American Rescue Plan dollars uh, that we went after which is all competitive you have to show how the pandemic uh how the pandemic impacted your language your culture well that's pretty simple we buried a lot of people that spoke our language or, or that a new conversational caddo that are no longer here but then again we have to justify that legally with legal briefs and and keep all that in you know intact because some of the language in the law related to the spend and the regulations is, is very vague. And we don't want to get into a situation where we have to uh, pay those dollars back or there's a finding. So you have to be very creative and, uh, and be able, being able to uh, use those type of dollars. Now, remember, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act dollars at 5 o'clock every day, uh, those dollars go back to the Treasury Department. At seven o'clock, uh, they're here for us to justify how we're going to use them, but it's all legally done. 
or we were not able to tap into those funds. And every day it goes back into the Treasury Department. That's the United States Treasury Department, not the Caddo Nation bank account. A lot of people think that we just have money that we can write a check. Unfortunately, that's not true. The U.S. government has those dollars under checks and balance. We have to justify all our moves. So we were able to justify with the U.S. Treasurer Office to allocate 350000 uh, to preserve our language. And we were able to do that with a inroad Caddo member who's a linguist who did an exceptional job in writing uh, her paper related to the impacts uh, during the pandemic and the loss of our language. That was embedded into a legal brief and provided to uh, uh, you know our our financial institutions and the U.S. Treasurer's Office. And so I'll give you an example. We put in. Uh, for a uh, capital improvement project for, with the U.S. Treasury Department, and it's very competitive. Uh, we were awarded the other day. Uh, we got an email. We haven't got the award letter. 167000 to create a Caddo house. A Caddo house is going to be used for uh, preserving our language and culture, and so it allows us to buy a place to allow that to happen. So we had to write that up and say, we'd like to use those funds. This is what we'd like to use it. And, uh, you know, please consider that. And we got that approved last week. So uh, uh, this linguist is gonna be housed here. It's gonna be a full-time job uh, here. Uh, and uh, they are in Road Caddo and uh, they're gonna be in, housed at the museum uh, uh, office. And, and the reason they're gonna be housed there is because uh, we're gonna, they're gonna have to see what language we have and, and all those recordings and get all that up and running. So uh, we're excited to see that happen. What's that? Oh, okay, that's good. I believe she's online too. I can't, you know what? Huh? I think Elena, Tolly, Tollane. Yeah, I always have trouble saying her name, but. If those of you that don't know Elena, we're very proud of her and the fact that she went to OU and is a linguist and she's already met some of our elders and she did an exceptional job helping us put the legal piece together to legally acquire the money to preserve our language. This is our last push effort and the council fully supported that and they continue to support that to preserve our language before it is gone. Uh, this is our last ditch effort to make that happen. And so we're uh, we're excited to to know that we're gonna uh, you know have that up and under uh, you know underway. Um, so going back, we're getting a lot of questions about um, the AOA and transportation. We have one wanting to know if we can transport from Oklahoma City, and then we also have a question like, why don't we um, have a transportation van like the Kiowa? Um, and I think you kind of. Yeah. So, so there was a question about, you know, uh, elder or someone wanting to know if we can transport people from Oklahoma City here, uh, you know. Uh, maybe or, not daily. But maybe not daily. For special. Uh, but, you know, if there's a special circumstance, I wouldn't see why we couldn't, you know, reach out to those individuals. Well, we have in the past there. when we've had events. Yeah, we, we have in the past reached out to them and. We've like chartered. Right. We've chartered vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done uh, activities uh, with our, our members, and, you know, uh, but yes, transit is a big issue related to the U.S. Transportation Department. They have dollars related to transit systems, but then again, you have to go after the money and then you can get a driver. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, what we really need is a satellite office in Oklahoma City you know, to so our members there can participate uh, with events and, the, and uh, have our own center there. And we've talked about that on the council, talked to the Oklahoma City rep about finding a facility, you know, finding the resources so uh, those people that live in around the city can communicate and go there for services or just like, uh, you know, our own center there so they can participate. In the meantime, they still want to come here. Well, if you go to the city, pick them up, by the time you get them here, it'd be time to take them right back. But uh, if, if you know of any members that, you know, want to come out and say hi or, or that want to, you know, come down and, and for whatever reason, it may be that whether it's not AOA or it may be a special event or it may be CHR, uh, you know, I know that they all transport 
uh, you know, but that transportation, uh, whole th all that we're, we're also looking at as well. So there's a question, um, has anyone followed up on Lake Chickasha? I think you did, right? About, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of issues related to Chickasha uh, Lake. Uh, one of the reasons it's being sold is because they're in debt. And, uh, you know, there's a debt related to the lake itself. And uh, there's a, you know, uh, it, it looks good. It, it'd be great. But I did talk to several of the uh, people that uh, run Chickasha, including the district attorney's office and the, uh, uh, the folks there that run the city itself. Apparently, there's been a lot of people that has gotten uh, uh, beat up. Uh, there's been a couple of deaths, murders uh, there. Uh, it's become an, it became a risk for the city uh, because they didn't have control of it. And one of the things that they've done is they asked the people that, I mean, basically the people had to move you know, move away from there because uh, uh, there was just a lot of, of things that were happening that were, people were breaking the law, uh, a lot of meth, uh, uh, you know, there was just no way to contain it. So, you know, it is up for sale. Now, if we bought the property, then we'd be faced with the same issue. You know, uh, I'll, well, give, I'll give you an example. We, we bought 77, we purchased 77 acres to build a state-of-the-art child care facility that is underway. Uh, with our architects and design team and a contractual agreement and what that looks like related to the children, administration of family children of services dollars. So there's a mechanism there. But until then, there is a lake that we acquired with the property. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we can't let anybody go out there and fish, although it's fully stocked because it becomes a risk until we have a master plan and insurance and, and, and all that stuff. But right now it's under construction due to construction, uh, due to uh, that world, other than our internal, you know, folks here are going out, maintaining the grass, checking on the facility, you know, providing security. But we still have to provide security more thoroughly. Eventually we're going to, uh, you know, have a construction uh, facility there uh, where we'll have to uh, make sure that all the construction equipment and tools and uh, all the supplies are safe. And so it's a safety thing. Uh, well, yeah, and a lot of our issues um, boil down to capacity. You know, progress is slow. And I think we're making, you know, great strides in our progress. But, you know, we have to have the capacity to take care of a lot of these projects, you know, that people are wanting us to undertake. I mean, we can't just take them on if we don't have the capacity here at the tribe to handle it. I mean, we're already, our employees are already kind of spread thin and we're trying to, we're slowly fixing that. But I think that's what a lot of our um, issues, I mean, it's just really slow right now. We are making progress. It's just, you know, and we do have great dreams and ideas and we get great ideas from the members, but it's just, um, you know, and we do keep a list of, of you know, your recommendations. It's just so slow. Um, progress just takes time, and we're slowly building up our capacity to take on some of these projects. And this, you know, new project up at Hinton is taking a lot of our time right now. There's so much that goes into it, from the roads to, you know, we have to coordinate with other tribes, and I mean, that have land that we're we're butted up against too. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, because yeah, those are thoughts going through my head as we're talking. Yeah, yeah just just the road leading into the. We'd love to take them all on, but it's, you know of the, the manpower. Care, just the road leading up to the child care center. You know, that's a county road. Well, we have to acquire the funding through federal highways and work with all county commissioners, and we have another tribe that uses that road. And so we've been in meetings with the other tribe related to their developments and related to our developments and making sure that we're all on the same page. It, does, it is a sm sl sm slow moving wheel, but in the meantime, you know, it's all about safety too. And so uh, we're, we're moving ahead. It's just, uh, you know, putting the teams together to make all that happen. It takes time. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's. Uh, my, 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 my cool. Huh? <laughs> Swing it back my way. Um, there is a question about, um, I just saw it. It's 
the questions are getting buried. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> um, okay, what is the council going to do with um, the last chairman, like the last chairman's wrongdoing and misuse of funds? Okay, so there was a question about what is the tribe going to do about the last chairman misuse of funds? Now, you may think that, and there may be other people that feel the same way. However, we found until you can prove that legally, ethically, and see that on paper, it doesn't exist. Now, with that said, uh, make no mistake about it. It is not about the past chairman. It's not about the previous vice chair or the chairman before that or the chairman before that or any employees, but make no mistake about it. If anyone, period, including present day people, defraud, embezzle legally, if, they, if we can prove legally that they've embezzled and defrauded this tribe, those records and that information will be handled over to the U.S. Attorney's Office or the FBI. There, because we wouldn't have, we don't have no choice. Uh, these are federal funds for the most part. That includes me as well. Okay, I wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, the vice chairman sitting right here and the council sitting right here. If I did something e legally and morally wrong related to finances, I would expect to be treated the same way. Uh, you know, we cannot steal from our people. Uh, we're all here to help. Again, uh, you know, I know that people said things about the previous chair and vice chair and a previous chair before that and that uh, until we can uh, you know until there's any evidence and and all that uh, you know again uh, you have to prove that in a court of law upon a reasonable doubt and but we do know there are issues with the casino yes we do yes we do know that there's yeah. issues uh, now it, with that said uh, I will let you know that uh, we're in regard to any employee period, past employee or past elected leaders, the rule is that it's a 10-year rule when there's any fraud or embezzlement federally on federal dollars that they can be prosecuted under federal law. That's a 10-year rule. So anyone in the last 10 years related to embezzling the tribe or defrauding the tribe, legally, if we can prove it, those records will be handed over to the U.S. Attorney's Office or the FBI, depending on where the money comes from but i will let you know right now those investigations are continuing on and with those agents uh, with the fbi and the u.s attorney's office there are investigations going on at this moment i can't say names uh, i'm not allowed to say who why where and where but i am uh, you know able to say that there are two fbi agents and records have been turned over yes and records have been turned over and uh, the u.s attorney's office is involved and federal prosecutors are looking at uh, several different things that happened here at the tribe. Okay, let's see here. So there was a request from John Moss that the Caddo Nation become a member of the Southwest American Indian Chamber of Commerce. Now, John, I do believe at one point we were a member of the main um, Chamber of Commerce, it's been years ago because I used to go to the meetings in Oklahoma City at the um, golf course there and um, on, I think on 36 at Twin Lakes or I don't, this may be, this may predate um, before this, there was a chapter here in this area. So I think if you have the information or maybe we can just go on their web page, we need to look into that. Um, the chairman has stepped away for a minute. He may have already looked into it. I'm not sure. We'll see when he gets back. I just remember at one point, at one time, we 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 were members. Yeah, because I I go to their monthly luncheons. Um, well, they have a new one um, that's in the Lawton area now. Before they only had one, and then they branched out. So yeah. Yes. Okay, so so uh, with that said, you know, we want to take just a couple more questions. I want to reiterate oh. that mm -hmm. it's 12.05, and uh, people are starting to drop offline. And before people drop offline, we want to end with a quorum, right? We want to make sure that we end with the quorum on a positive note. Uh, those that uh, want a copy of the 
uh, reports and financial information. You have every financial dollar, every penny that this government has executed and every single resource at your hand and your disposal. If uh, members uh, don't have uh, the capacity to get online and get the information, let them know they can come here to the tribe and they can get the same information, a hard copy. The only thing you don't have is like the, the proprietary information as far as accounting numbers and stuff like that. Just, you know, cause it's that we, we couldn't do that, but uh, uh, you have every number as far as uh, dollar amounts. Uh, so before we end and call the meeting, uh, you know, and conclude, is there any more, we'll take a couple more questions. Yeah. If you have more questions, we're, we're, we still have a quorum for now. Right. Um, we have, I just, count that we have 23 but we, we can but. see on our end they're dropping now. okay yeah 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 there's uh, some, people some people off. are dropping off so we want to make sure we we still have a corn for now so we'll take a couple more questions so john moss was asking if we um had explored uh looking you know uh, being a member of the southwest chamber the um american indian chamber of commerce the one that john aren't you the chairman of that yeah, he's the president of that. No, no, we haven't explored that. I'd like to lie and say yes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm busy doing other <laughs> yeah. things. So, uh, but we have uh, we have yeah. other chambers reaching out to us, and uh, we haven't even got back with them right now. We're trying to uh, just secure our funding, and and you know, at a certain point, uh, as the growth that we've seen, we don't want to implode, and so we got to safeguard our employees right now and safeguard the money and and uh, balance things out and put teams together so that's where we're at and there's a question here about when will district met, uh, reps have their meetings and are they going to do it following this membership meeting i believe that that is up to the members uh the constituents the constituents that uh uh you represent as district representatives you know Again, uh, I'm sure they'll be getting a hold of their constituents within their district and having meetings, and we'll fully support those meetings financially. You know, if you need food, hopefully it's, you don't, it's, we get through the surge, you don't have to do it by Zoom, but, you know, if you do, maybe our IT people you know, would have to load up all, I don't know. I don't know if they'll load up all their equipment and their, and their stuff. It's a lot. We'd have to need, we'd need a bus for that, but, uh. Just keep us posted, you know, whatever you need, and and uh, we'll support those meetings uh, by all means. Yeah, maybe when the numbers come down, I think in some areas they're coming down a little, but yeah, it seemed like you know, and and I'm um, you know, I'm going to be frank. I mean, I know the council's always said, Bobby, you don't have a filter, but it seems like when we decided to have the the meeting virtual, you know, it was just such a crazy time. You know, it was just like every we was getting all these reports. People were getting sick, but right now it seems like things are kind of opening up. But at the same time, you're seeing congressional leaders and other tribes. I mean, Fort Sill Apache, I believe their chairman just, <laughs> you know, came down with COVID, and there's other elected leaders. So still, we're kind of gauging it. Uh, it's I, I, we just don't know. I mean, we just, Kelly and I we held a meet and greet at the library. We just used our phone or laptop for Zoom, and it was pretty easy. We had a lot of people log on. I mean, so I mean. If any of y'all you all need help with Zoom or something, we can we can we can help. Yeah. Yeah. Did you give her the microphone so they can hear her? She doesn't want the microphone. No. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just basically reiterating it wasn't a very hard process getting that set up through the Facebook link. And it was just Jennifer and I, we didn't have to have IT there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just so we just went to the library. You can go to any of the libraries and um, and rent a conference room. We wanted to kind of get a big space where people could spread out. I've got an idea. Why don't we just get our grandkids? If we, you know, if anyone has grandkids, uh, they could figure this out quicker than we can. Man, I tell you, I don't even know how some of this stuff works myself. But. Yeah. So yeah, like for Oklahoma City would be easy for us to help out with, and then I mean we can come down if, if anyone needs help with Zoom or on their laptop. So yeah, we when where there, if there's a will, there's a way. We'll get it done. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, so so just so that everyone knows, there was uh out of 70 employees and contractors that we had, we had 14 staff members that came down with COVID. It was heavy here internally. It, 
they either had COVID or they were quarantined uh, with symptoms. I mean, that's just within the past two weeks. And uh, even my little granddaughter, you know, uh, came down with it. And, uh, and, and, you know, it's just, I think we had several council members call, hey, my grandkids, got, I got it. I mean, it was just, yeah. So right now uh, we have, I believe uh, we have, still have eight, right? Yeah, we still have eight on quarantine that has that have COVID. So that those are employees. You can come up to the mic. <laughs> or did we look cut right now? Sorry. Well, give me the mic. You want the mic? Mark, you give me that mic. Uh, this is Jennifer Wilson, and I'm the Oklahoma City representative. And yesterday, uh, the child care passed out. Uh, bags uh, backpacks with uh, supplies school supplies in them and um, a, three of the members of the of the child care came to norman and passed them out for the oklahoma city area but one thing i found interesting was uh, a sign of our times that in their backpack they have a kelvar um, what would you call it bulletproof um, shield yeah and uh, I just uh, that just I, I I didn't know what to think about that but something that's hopefully not needed but that they they would have and uh, I, I my, my hats off to the um, child care for passing out as many uh, backpacks as they could right, yesterday and I think they're doing it believe they're doing it today also uh oh and anadarko is it i'm not sure anyway i there's they are still doing it and and contact you can always contact uh child care if they have you know if they if they still have some available so um i just wanted to give a shout out to the child care program thank you okay okay yeah so we were just told in in four two more hours are they doing it right now okay so so there's they're in anadarko they're um we're at anadarko first baptist church okay so if you're in the anadarko area or close they're they're still handing out backpacks for the next couple of hours and car seats and haircuts and just everything your child will need to get ready for school for the school year. Um, we have a question here about um, has the historical preservation officer discussed with the council um, the issues around the artifacts at the Ross Perot Museum in Dallas. The Ross Perot Museum in Dallas have we been briefed on that I know you were working you work mostly on that. Um, the historical preservation piece. I know, I think it came up once before. I don't think we've got an update on that yet. I know, yeah, we have so many. Grab the mic for how many we have. We have, yeah, we're getting inundated with. Um, so, so, yeah, so there was a question about Ross Perot Museum. Right now we have so many museums and agencies and dealing with NAC collections as well as non nac collections, human remains, vessels, uh, you name it, be, we're being inundated uh, like crazy. I mean, uh, our preservation department, more mail out of all 70 employees and contractors, more mail goes to our cultural preservation department than any other department. And everyone wants us to respond, you know, right then. And we just haven't got there yet, but we are we are keeping a, uh, going, going through all of them as we can and uh, trying to get all that taken care of. But, you know, you, you, we could use a whole team you know, related to that. And we, we just hadn't got there yet. I mean, we just finally cleaned up the, those grants. And so, uh, you know, and have someone responding. We're and, making progress. It's yeah, it's, 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 taken, it's taken time. That, uh, uh, Ross Perot is from Texarkana. And so he's our, from our Aboriginal homeland. And I actually got to see the little house he was uh, uh, raised in here not too long ago when I was down there. And we talked about involving our people back in that area 
And so they're going to be reaching out to Metro Club probably and Culture Club and other tribal uh, leaders or entities to come down and, uh, you know, help the city build the, the culture piece. And uh, before we go move on, though, I'm going to hand the mic over to our newly elected uh, Anadarko rep. Uh, I know she probably looks at she, she looks like she wants to beat me up. They'll probably can see her, but <laughs> I'm going to hand it to her anyway. Zoom in real close. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Tracy Martin, and I am the newest member of the council. Um, I want to thank uh, the Anadarko Caddo members for voting me in and trusting me to get this job done. Um, also, uh, I will be having a district meeting soon. So I will get, let everybody know that's in the Anadarko area. We will probably have it at the Elder Center in Anadarko by the Regency Apartments. Uh, when I get a computer and a phone, for all this business, I will let everybody know. Thank you. Uh, I wanted, um, I wanted to make an uh, announcement that the Metro Caddo Culture Club will have a festival uh, at the First American Museum, uh, November sixth. It's on a sun. It's going to be on a Sunday. So. That's just the first announcement that's come out about it. So you will be seeing more information come out. Thank you. Great. So, so before we move on, I mean, we'll take another question or two, and I think we're going to convene for the day. But I want everyone to know that if you're looking at me, and I don't mean to hurt your eyes, but when they talk <laughs> about our Caddo people being matrilineal and the women running things, I tell you what it is it is pretty remarkable you know uh to to know that you know men our caddo men would always you know they're the they're the ones up front but these women they'll thump you in the head <laughs> sure will and i've learned that real quick <laughs> but yeah when you need it and so uh it's anyway it's it, i look forward for you know continued success and i want to thank each one of the ladies sitting here uh you know and uh who you represent and our families and our tribe, you know, for taking your time to help our people, you know, and uh, we all have family or ones that went on before us, you know, and uh, Sitha, it's what it's just it's just me now, you know, that's what they talk about Sitha, you know, uh, look at me, you know, Ohio, Father in Heaven, look at me, you know, that uh, it's just us, you know, and we all need each other. But I just want to let everybody know online, uh, don't need anything done. Don't talk to these women. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thanks each and every one of you. Uh, do we have any more questions? I know we probably do. So we had a question that um, it kind of it's related to what we talked about earlier. It's about the election board or the election in general. Um, we have a request that people running for office um, to send out information about themselves and what they stand for. It says people like me have no way of knowing who to vote for. And so that was kind of an issue in this last um, election. Um, you know, and that, that's one of the that's one of the thing, reasons that kind of spurred us wanting to start looking at more at more of our ordinances. Um, we need to be able to find a way to do this without, um, I guess, controversy. I know in the past we've been allowed to do, um, we've been allowed to do handouts, you know, and we've been able to, we've been provided addresses for mail outs and that wasn't the issue this time. And it stems from maybe some tribal conflicts before. I think some people got fired in the, maybe an election a couple of years back or a few elections back. That those are things we're trying to work out right now. We need to be able to insulate our election board from tribal politics. Right, right. So, so we are um, going to make a good faith effort to look at the election board to kind of insulate um, some of that from happening. You know, because we shouldn't have people um, having you know things happen to them because they serve on a board. You know. Um. Anyway, I don't know if. 
Anyone else has input on that? Here, Kelly. I'll yeah. give her that. And we were aware of that as well. We appreciate the comment and question that you made regarding that. I know um, Jennifer, Jennifer Reeder and I both were up for re-election and we tried to get the word out like what we were about, uh, a lot of the things that we've done this past year on council. Uh, we put a lot of that on Facebook. Um, that was like, oh. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Karaoke. No, I was basically just commenting um, that that was an issue. Uh, Jennifer Reeder and I both were up for re-election, and we, you know, we weren't allowed to have a mailing list, which um, uh, Jennifer had requested. Um, so what we did was we put a lot of our information and a lot of the things that we've done this past year on council, like we put a lot of updates on what we've done and what we stood for on Facebook. And that was the best resource that we could think of on out as a uh, getting the word out um, was social media. So we used a lot of social media. And um, I know that I put a article in the Anadarko paper, which is locally, but um, to reach out to the rest of the members, we did put put our thoughts and beliefs and what we were doing like on social media. So we were hoping that that would really help out. And we do use social media quite a bit. Um, so I wanted just to touch on that, let you know that I appreciate the comment and that question. Right, and we realize a lot, of, there's a lot of people who don't use social media. That's why we were gonna try to do some mail outs. And, it, and it's not the fault of the election board. It's a policy failure on our part. Um, we need to shore up the election ordinance to, to make it, you know, where the board is able to function, um, you know, and be insulated from tribal politics. And we're gonna work on that. Well, it wasn't. We on? Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Well, is this isn't concerning the election or the election board, but I am very grateful. I, excuse me. My name's Kay O'Neill, and I am the Fort Cobb rep. And I do appreciate each and every one of you for coming out and voting and being a part of the election and being a part of our tribe. You know, we're moving forward and it's a wonderful thing. I I got to be the lead to this year at uh, Cattle Mounds to rebuild the grass house. And it was wonderful. Like I said, we got hit with COVID and we did everything that we could as far as safety measures go. The, the staff at Cattle Mounds said we'd fulfilled our agreement. If we had chose to leave, we, we could have left at any time, but we chose to stay and stay socially distanced, take many, many COVID tests. And fortunately, we've, um, we've maintained a safe distance and we're all back here together again as a Caddo Nation. And we had a uh, Caddo, Caddo, it's hard to differentiate, Caddo Mounds and Friends of Caddo Mounds were very good to us. They were a wonderful host to us and they, they uh, took care of our every need that we had and you know some that we didn't even know that we needed they were already there on top of it and I appreciate it but even more so I just something there's something there to be back on the land with our people rebuilding rebuilding a house it, well, we weren't rebuilding the old house we were building a new house and what a wonderful gift it was to be able to be there and because of the extreme heat, we had to cut out early. And so therefore we did not work full days and we stopped around noon. And so we have to go back. I believe it's going to be Thanksgiving weekend and do the thatching. So if anyone is interested in doing that, please get on the Caddo Mounds website. And I'm sure that there'll be a lot more information on it there. And again, I just want to tell you each, I appreciate each and everything that you've done for us. Chairman. <laughs> you want to sing a song, Verna? <laughs> she get Verna gave me a sign that she'll beat me up too. <laughs> okay, uh, 
let's take one more question before we before we convene. You know, I don't unless I miss somebody, I don't I think everything's been addressed. Well, uh, you know, just to let everyone know, we talked about this with our IT and internally about having a 1-800 number, you know, where you can call, you know, if you had a complaint, if you had a suggestion or an idea, you know, or a Dropbox or something on our way. We'll get there. We just want everyone to be patient uh, with us as we move forward. Now, it took all this time to, you know, to uh, for the tribe to get in the, the situation it's been in for all these years you're gonna have to give us some time to get out of it you know we've been in for 12 months we just got the the new council in uh regardless of how you voted or who you voted for i'm glad that you went out and vote like Kay said you know we need everyone to to participate no matter what and we're all in this together and uh please feel free to uh see any of us any of us on the street uh don't tell us your horror stories no we're just kidding let us know <laughs> what it is you have to say uh say hi to us we're all approachable uh and uh you know if we don't get back with you we will or somebody will and if that doesn't happen just keep on us we're all wearing 10 12 different hats and so we just really appreciate being able to serve you our constituents at large as a whole throughout the country and look forward to continuing on so uh we're going to go ahead and uh i think we have to have a motion for that to uh adjourn adjourn so we're going to ask someone to make a motion to adjourn. Motion moved by um, made by Christy Chandler. Christy Chandler. Christy Chandler. Yeah, they can hear me. Oh, made a motion. Okay. And this. And a second by Becky Quinlan. And a second by who? Becky Quinlan. Becky Quinlan? Mm -hmm. Second that. Do we have a vote? Okay. So this video and the transcript will be available on our website next week. Got it. You need to sing a cattle song where you're counting them. Go ahead. Hate no wawa, 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 hate no wawa. Hate no wawa, 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 hate no wawa. Y'all want me to take care of no wawa, hate no wawa, hate no wawa. Bet y'all didn't know you were going to get a performance too. So we have nine yeses so far. Somebody else must have dropped off. No, if you vote yes to adjourn, just say yes or a or I or ahe or however you want to do Owe. it. Owe. Owe. <laughs> ah. Mado. So we're up to 11 yeses. Anyone else? Do we have any no votes or abstentions? So we have eleven zero zero. Yeah. 
Okay, so motion was made, seconded, and we have 11 0 0. Uh, no one abstains. Meeting's closed. The uh, meeting is adjourned. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and look forward to hopefully having you in person or uh, getting together and being able to eat again <laughs> together. So, thank you very much. Have a great day.